This week, for the first time here in Australia, a delegation of Ukrainian MPs is visiting our parliament. A short time ago, I caught up with the head of that delegation, Helena Mihailiuk, beginning by asking her about that visit by Xi Jinping to meet with Putin in Moscow. For Ukraine, it's highly important that four conditions will be met. Firstly, is that we do not trade with our territories. 1991 boundaries, sovereign, you know, border, borders of Ukraine are preserved. So we are not ready to negotiate with the lives of our people because on the occupied territories, there are a number of Ukrainians who are waiting for Ukrainian soldiers every single day to come. When we liberated Kherson in November, people stayed there for a couple of months without water, electricity, internet, and mobile connection. And they were praying every single day for, for the army to liberate them. And when we uh, liberated the territories, they were drinking water from the puddles or wow. from the dirty river. And they were celebrating that, I mean, they already can, you know, breathe the fresh Ukrainian air. And they were very much happy because of so, this. So any peace deal has to see Russia out mm. yes. of all of the occupied Ukrainian territory? Completely, yes. That's the starting point? Yes. For us, it's, uh, it's not negotiable because our electorate, our citizens, they will not allow politicians or president to trade with territories. We have a number of MPs whose families are still on occupied territories. How come you, you betray them? Can, can the Chinese play the role of honest broker, do you think, in, in a potential hope. peace? We do, we do hope. We do hope. But uh, uh, we cannot agree on, let's say, Moscow uh, uh, plan, Moscow negotiations that uh, Crimea and occupied territories, they still, uh, they want them to, to stay with Russia and they want to negotiate just on the sovereign Ukrainian territories that are still independent. So first one requirement is 1991 borders. The second one is international tribunal, criminal tribunal, so that all the war criminals should be punished. Mm. Justice should prevail, rule of law should prevail, and all the victims' family, they are waiting for the justice. Thirdly, it's highly important for us to have reparations uh, so that the Russian assets will be frozen and then transferred to Ukraine. And the last one is uh, uh, full recovery, full restoration of Ukraine, uh, because, you know, lots of objects are destroyed, damaged. We have 300,000 of people without any homes to go to because yeah. they were completely destroyed. Well, you've Russia. got strong international support, both in Europe, the uh, United States, this country, of course. We, I'll get to that in, in a moment, but with the International Criminal Court, issuing an arrest warrant for Putin, yeah. then the next day he's in Mariupol. What do you make of that visit, the timing of it? Well, he visited uh, uh, the city that was completely destroyed by uh, Russians a year ago. It was half a million citizens' population. Our minimum estimation that around 80,000 civilians were killed there. Uh, yeah, at zero minimum, minimum estimation because we cannot, you know, calculate. A number of uh, people were kidnapped, just moved, uh, you know, illegally by force to Russian Federation, including kids. Uh, that's why he just visited ruins that, uh, uh, that are without any citizens. Our president, he goes to the front line, to Bakhmut, while there are shellings there, and he's not afraid, you know, uh, to be there on the front line, to talk to soldiers, and to be, you know, there on, on the zero level, as we call it. The Russian ambassador to Australia says that the ICC has tunnel vision, that they're not looking at Ukrainian atrocities, including torture, sadistic torture of prisoners of war, and the execution of prisoners of war. That was his argument. What do you say to that? Well, uh, if you will have a look uh, at the exchanges that uh, uh, were made recently on the prisoners that, that were back from uh, Ukrainian side and from Russian side, you can really have a look that Russians, they had uh, good, uh, you know, package uh, staying in Ukrainian so-called prisons, but they were not tortured, they have no problems, they had medical care, they had uh, good uh, support package in terms of meal, etc. And have a look at the Ukrainians. I mean, they're, 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 
the morality is very high, but physical conditions, they, yeah, they were awful. I mean, of course, they were tortured, beaten, and uh, all those interviews that we had with them of how was it for them to stay in Russian prisons, it's, it's, it's you know, any kind of international agreements, international conventions, uh, they do not work in Russia. The Australian support, we mentioned it a moment ago, but the Bushmasters, there's the training of Ukrainian soldiers as well. You've been meeting some high-level figures here in Canberra. What's been your message? What more do you need? Yeah. Uh, for our um, victory, it was really existential uh, to receive that support that Australia has already provided. And we are very much grateful that last year you helped us to preserve our freedom and sovereignty. But we can we believe that 2023 should be victorious for us. And we are really looking forward for continuation of that support that was provided to Ukraine. But we are very much welcome Australia to join tank coalition. Uh, yeah, and uh, of course, uh, our soldiers, our military, they do count on Australian support because that makes a difference. That so not really just Bushmasters, you want some tanks? Yeah. What sort of maybe maybe, would you maybe like? also like Abrahams, you know? We were discussing just today uh, while we were having um, high-level meetings that uh, if there is any possibility to provide consistent uh, um, support package to Ukraine in the next budget that will be voted by your parliament in May 2023, very much in high need in Ukraine and we'll be very much grateful for that. And finally, would you like to see the Australian Embassy return to Kyiv? Definitely, yeah, we're looking forward to, uh, to this. Uh, almost all embassies are there. Uh, they are back uh, um, last year, I mean, at least in summer. Um, so we are looking forward to, to have your ambassador back. Helena Mihailuk, appreciate your time. Welcome to Canberra. And Thank you. All the best over the next 12 to 18 months. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you a lot. Thank you.